Hello and welcome to this Vaticano special coming to you from the Eternal City. Pope Francis's visit to the country Iraq is fast approaching. This will be a historic visit as it will be the first time a Pope has ever visited the Middle Eastern nation. The Pope will meet with political and church leaders from the region as well as key Muslim leaders. He will also spend time meeting some of those who have been persecuted greatly over the years but kept their faith strong. Iraq is a complicated region with a rich and troubled history. It has deep wounds of pain and suffering which have been left after the war. And someone who has witnessed this firsthand is Cardinal Fernando Filoni. He was appointed an ambassador of the Holy See to Iraq in 2001. Now, ahead of the first ever papal visit to Iraq, Cardinal Filoni sits down with Vaticano for an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview. The first time you went to Iraq, tell me about that. What was your first impression of the country? The first human impression was good because I was accepted like the people for the first time meeting somebody coming as a messenger. And in the tradition, Arab tradition, those who are uh, uh, visitors, messengers, they are well accepted. They offer you dates and the milk. My first human impression was good. The other impression was that I found the nation in a very, very, very strong difficulty because of the sanction which were imposed on Iraq reduce the people in a very, very, very difficult condition. Children sometimes had no medicine, the hospitals were in very bad shape, and uh, waiting for one day when freedom could come. Politically, it was uh, very difficult too. But uh, Iraqi people at the time under Saddam Hussein, Hussein regime used not to talk politically. So if you don't want to have a problem, don't talk politics, everything is fine. When the Pope asked you to go to Iraq, what was the mission? What did he ask you to do? Well, uh, I remember well the, uh, the 19th of March 2001 when uh, Pope John Paul II, uh, in the homily, told me, uh, I am sending you as a messenger of peace in uh, Iraq. This was a very um, strong message, which I took in my heart, which I always have present in my mind. So you can imagine that two years after, uh, of that message when the war started. It was exactly the 19th March 2003. The same day. The same day of my Episcopal ordination and the message which I received started also the war. And I was thinking the Holy Father is asking me to be still in this condition messenger of peace. Was that a difficult decision for you to make because the country was in such a bad state? You had bombs dropping from overhead. Many other diplomats, humanitarian groups, they fled the country, but you decided to remain despite it being quite unsafe to do so. Humanly speaking, I have no family. So I have no children, I have no wife, I am at the service of the church, so I have not to give to others occasion to worry about myself. I was free. And this is a very important condition because you enter in the life of the people where you are doing your service in a very free manner, thinking that you are a man of the church, you have a message, you have to love people, and the people where you stay is your family. So, you so could, I share with them. You could condition. empathize with them more. Absolutely, yes. You felt the same fear. Absolutely, yes. This is uh, why you enter in a rel relationship with them eh, and they will appreciate you. I don't forget the last days when I have to move out of Iraq because I was 
uh, named Apostolic Nuncio in, uh, in the Philippines, many Muslims came to say, thank you very much, you are part of our people. And they gave some Muslim, they gave it to me a cross saying, we did this cross for you, not to forget us in your life. And this is love, this is appreciation. When you were there during the US invasion, like how severe and dangerous was it? When I was there, uh, I said that to the priests and the bishops, we stay here, we don't go away. We have to follow our people. We ask to open all the churches, to open the seminary, to open our uh, shelters. So those who would like to come and to stay with us because they fearing to be touched by bombs or by, uh, they can come and they find the shelter in our places. And a lot of people night time used to come also in the churches bringing their mattress and uh, staying together. It was a moment also sharing with the Muslim and the Christians also brotherhood. So Christians and Muslims would come and take shelter yes. together? Yes, and they told me sometimes uh, uh, we use also to sing a Christian song because also the Muslim like uh, the Christian music. songs. <laughs> <laughs> a, a lovely moment of solidarity, yes. a lovely human connection. Yes. And when you first arrived in Iraq and you were doing your work, Saddam Hussein was in power and as a top church official acting as a sort of diplomat, did you ever interact with him or his government or meet him? Well, uh, at the time, uh, no one could meet Saddam Hussein, so I presented my credential to the vice president. I uh, can tell you that when uh, Saddam Hussein would like uh, to listen some aspects from my point of view, he used to send messengers and we share uh, some aspect of that. And this is why uh, before the war, many times he sent somebody asking me what to do, what not to do. And this is why in the last days before the war, I asked him, renounce. You asked Saddam Hussein, renounce. I sent a message, renounce to all, uh, through the law, through all the means as uh, arms of destruction, especially destruction. And uh, he did it. So in a very short time, he made a law that uh, the mass destruction you know, was uh, uh, forbidden in Iraq. But uh, that was not accepted at the time. They say, we cannot accept Saddam Hussein saying truth. Well, that is, was bad. When you said you can have a fine life in Iraq just as long as you didn't talk about politics. Yes. Did you find then sometimes you were walking on eggshells or you had to be very careful about what you preached in your sermons that nothing no, would be no, no, pointed? No, 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 never, never, I never. And uh, I can tell you, of course, uh, we, we have to be careful. We have not to mix inside in politics. We have to respect the countries. But we could uh, speak about justice, peace, love, understanding, and uh, uh, good, goodness for the people. Your Eminence, what happened in 2006? I know this was a moment when the violence really came to your doorstep. A car bomb was detonated right outside where you were staying. Well, well that was a, very, a period of very difficult because uh, no law and because uh, uh, a lot of uh, terrorist attacks were done, and they, I used to joke with my sisters. If we listen the noise, we are alive. If we don't listen the noise of the bomb, it means we are with God. That's a strange way of looking at it, but I suppose you're right. If you can hear the sound of the bombs, that's a good thing, rather <laughs> yes. than not hearing the sound so of the bombs. It was a joke among yeah. us. Eh? Yeah, yeah. And I suppose in a situation like that, you cling to humor, you cling to all these things to keep going. Yes, and get through yes, it. Yes, of course. You need it to, 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 to have a humor but, and to in front of the situation 
uh, very no electricity, no telephone, no connection. You cannot go around. You have to to get also food in some way. Uh, so uh, very hard, difficult time. But uh, it was the same difficulty we share with the whole community, the people. And your eminence, I know, of course, a man of such strong faith, but at a moment like that, when you see such destruction, devastation and sorrow and suffering around you, and it seemed endless, I'm sure, at some points, did you ever wonder, God, where are you in all of this? What is happening to these people here? They have an expression which sometimes uh, in Western countries we don't have, you know? Inshallah. What means? If this is the will of God, they have uh, perhaps it could be a fatality, but could be also a way of thinking. God will protect us. These are the consequences of a human act, not coming from God. I read in a recent interview you did with our colleague Selene Tade at the National Catholic Register, you were saying that in order to get peace in the country. They have to overcome this concept of revenge that is so deeply ingrained. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. If they don't get over that concept, that way of thinking, there will be war forever. How do you change that mindset or that culture of, as you say, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth? Well, this is a, a tradition, especially in Oriental side. So we, we know also that in the Bible, is a, uh, very strong and the Jesus correct when they said it is written but uh, you don't do the same if we don't change this mind it is difficult as a Christians the gospel is telling us how to think to think when you are uh, uh, manifesting your faith God is not God of vengeance. Is it fair to say the majority of Christians in the country want this peace? Do the majority of Muslims as well want this peace badly? I am sure pe people, they want peace. The question is when you are uh, buying arms, what do you do with arms? If you buy arms, it means that first or late you will use it. Mm -hmm. If you don't by arms. Also, if you are in difficulty, you try no, to have a contact, to have a dialogue, and to see if it is possible a solution. The persecution of Christians and other groups in the country how bad did you see it getting? I've read interviews you've given before about the state they were living in, they were driven out of their homeland and their, their home cities. Uh, we have to say, at the level of the gospel, Jesus said, if they persecuted me, you too will be persecuted. So we think we have to stay and to say, okay, let me just to be persecuted. No, no, that is the extreme of what could happen. Mm. We believe that it is possible to share with others feelings, dialogue, respect, rights. The question is, uh, I have not just uh, to support you or to tolerate you. I have to give it to you rights. If I respect you, I have an in, in, in this dialogue. And so many families left. And is it fair to say that half of them, around half of them, don't want to return? Some do want to return, but only if there's security in the country? I think, in my opinion, peace is the essential part of the talk. Also, for our Christians, I many times I question friends, families in Iraq. Why you want to go away? And they said to me, what I have to do? In my family, I have 
people who was killed. Other, well, other, I have an, no money, I have no job, what I have to do? Perhaps I can survive, but my children, this is why I have to go away. So if we will give peace, it starts also development, work, and they people need a will stay there. need a future for their children. Exactly. And did you find that hard and heavy in your heart when you would meet the persecuted Christians and you would hear their stories? Personally, I have uh, not only respect, love. And uh, always I question myself, could I support the same problems, the same persecution? I have been a prefect of the Congregation for the Evangelization of People. I found everywhere people persecuted. Many times also Pope Francis said, there are more persecuted people today than in the past. So we have not acquainted with this, but we have to accept that those who are giving, their, they are witnessing their faith, they need our love, our respect because they are doing that not only for that, for God, but also for us. So, uh, I love her very much. This upcoming papal trip to Iraq, what do you think will be the strongest message it will send out to the people of Iraq? Well, uh, the first uh, message could be, for instance, in Ur, is the opportunity to tell all those who are of monotheistic religion, they can share each other this strong point. We believe in one God. Please, we have to find ourselves brothers in this. So this is interreligious dialogue could start in a much more strong way in Ur. The Holy Father already had occasion to be with the Sunni Muslim, now with the Shia Muslim. So it's a, a good occasion to have an interreligious dialogue. This is, could be in Ur. I think in, in, in Baghdad, when the Holy Father will meet uh, the community, uh, the Chaldean and the Syrian, the Syrian uh, Catholic community in the cathedral where people were killed just a, a few years ago, uh, will be an occasion to give uh, uh, enthusiasm, courage. And another could be this uh, encouragement for the minorities, especially in the north, with the Yazidis, with uh, Shabak, uh, with all the other minorities, the Christians are minorities, no? So I, I, I am sure this is, will be a strong message for all. Do you think this is the right time for the trip? I know some people have been wondering, given the coronavirus and the restrictions, that the people will not be able to get close to the Pope and meet him. It will be very much meeting leaders and meeting uh, politicians. Um, why is it so important now, the trip? Well, uh, the Holy Father many times manifests the will to go. Unfortunately, or for one reason or for the other, until now was not possible. There is no a, a very peaceful moment, ideal moment to go there. It's a real moment. Covid is for all everywhere. Security everywhere, you could find the difficulty. I remember also when uh, the Holy Father went uh, to uh, Central African Republic, many said, don't go, don't go, don't go. At the end, uh, the people defended the Holy Father in, uh, in, the, in the pastoral visit. So it is a good moment. Is the ideal moment? No answer. When you think back on your time in Iraq, what are your strongest or vivest, vivid, most vivid memories? Well, it's difficult to say. Of course, uh, um, from the spiritual point of view, uh, many aspects. Uh, the Holy Father will go uh, to visit Al-Sistani, the Grand Ayatollah, near 
that place, there is the tomb of Ezekiel prophet. He's a man uh, who encouraged no, the, uh, the people of Jerusalem slaved there during Babylon. And they gave a, a hope. He gave a vision. A vision of that one day from bones, dead bones, new bodies will uh, start. It's a vision. We have to think about it. I read someone say about you, many great things have been said about you, but one thing was that you're as tough as nails. <laughs> you know that expression? No, I, I don't think <laughs> that is true. That is as impression. I am not so tough. I am a poor man. Determined, like, you know? tough, unmoving. No, not. The question is, if you are, a, uh, you have a priest, you are a pastor, you cannot abandon the people. It's not a question of tough. Who is tough? The people are still living there, working there, suffering there. One day I will go, they will remain. Who is much more tough? When do you think they will see peace in Iraq? No, I think they are building slowly, but it is necessary that all minorities, part, religious, civil, all will concur in some way. You cannot just have a peace because somebody is imposing, but because you are building. Of course they are moving, but still a lot has to be done. This is internally, is up to them, but externally, it means also we have to help them to get this condition, peaceful condition. Your Eminence, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. I look forward to meeting you in Iraq. Thank you. And thank you so much for your time. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. Thanks.